Well, one of the characteristics of both this outstanding panel of speakers and the innovators uh, about whom they're speaking to us is that they are individuals who are neither defined nor confined by their specific niche uh, in the uh, broad field of uh, evaluation and care for congenital heart disease patients. And that's certainly true uh, of our next speaker. Uh, I think Gil Wernofsky is known to many or most of us uh, as an exceptional, experienced, now patriarch of the field of pediatric cardiac critical care. Uh, but Gil's contributions uh, include uh, the kinds of organization that has led to some of the first successful prospective clinical trials uh, in the management of congenital heart disease, uh, the organization of uh, amazing uh, educational uh, programs for people uh, in medicine, nursing, and all of the related fields. Uh, Gil, by the way, together with our host Jeff, uh, was the primary uh, proponent of the proposal for the next World Congress, uh, which will be held four years from now in Washington, D.C. And as importantly, Gil has been a great champion uh, for the needs of congenital heart disease families with focus not just on the neurodevelopmental outcome uh, of their children, but also of the needs of parents and siblings, uh, which are intrinsic not just to the well-being of those individuals, but ultimately to satisfactory outcomes uh, for our patients. So uh, it's a great honor for me to introduce Dr. Gil Wernofsky. Thanks, Marshall, for that kind introduction. Thank you. So as it says here, I work in cardiac critical care, and and many times the, um, uh, the, the cardiac ICU can be the funnel of malcontent. Uh, in many places where I've visited and where I've worked, it's a place where there's a lot of politics, a lot of stakeholders, a lot of tension. Um, and uh, I think that's why Norman referred to it as the insensitive care unit or the expensive care unit. I wasn't going to comment that echocardiography is a field of hyphens, which is mild to moderate, moderate to severe, <laughs> trivial. But we'll get into that later. I, I, it was impossible for me to decide what to do about this because the ICU is a very unique place and that there's really not any particular innovation uh, or one thing that I could say is ICU based because we both rely on all of the skill of everyone else in the heart program and things build on each other. So when I think about there's innovations, innovators, medicines, technologies, procedures, care systems, incremental and disruptive changes, uh, I thought it was really impossible to do that, so I'm going to review all of them uh, in five minutes. So I, I think um, one of the most important things that we relied on in the ICU was the skill of the surgeons to do surgery in the neonate. Uh, and this involved hypoplastic left heart syndrome, of course, uh, as well as the arterial switch operation, et cetera, and some of the pioneers who you already know who have been involved in this, in this room, which is now... Uh, move forward into the hybrid strategy. It was really with the neonatal heart surgery that we learned the physiology of the neonatal myocardium and stress. We learned the risks and benefits of intracardiac lines. We learned the, list, uh, we learned the benefits and risks of mechanical ventilation and so on and so on. If we didn't have successful neonatal operations, what we have learned in the ICU would never have been brought forward. Similarly, we would not uh, have the ability to have survivors with things such as the arterial switch operation to then advance things like 3D modeling and rotational angiography and MRI. These things have relied on children surviving from the intensive care unit who relied on surgery and anesthesia. I was thinking about medications, and I think it'll be a little bit of a, a shock to everyone here that I put at the top of my list Synergis or palivizumab. Many people in the room don't remember the days, uh, especially in the cold weather states where the intensive care unit might be 40% filled with patients with heart disease with life-threatening pneumonitis. And the fact that Synergis came around completely changed our ICU uh, patient mix, uh, during, particularly during the winter months. And then, of course, nitric oxide, which was uh, nominated uh, and won the Nobel Prize. It was the molecule of the year in Time Magazine 2001 and greatly changed the way we managed pulmonary hypertension, which was very dangerously managed before that with hyperventilation and very toxic drugs. 
I'd say the most important technology uh, for me in the ICU was the advent of flow-triggered mechanical ventilation, allowing the baby to participate in the rate at which they get mechanically ventilated and minimizing the chance of underventilating or overventilating the baby based upon the settings delivered by the physicians. With a few honorable mentions, as David already talked about, pulse oximetry, but also, of course, as other things have been talked about up here on the, on the podium, end tidal cotonography and importantly, bedside echocardiography, which has tremendously helped our field. And as you can see, these come from outside the intensive care unit. Um, regarding system changes and disruptive changes, I think has been the, spep, the excuse me, the separation of our field from general pediatric intensive care and the development of cardiac specific skill in nursing. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be trained in Boston. Uh, there have now been societies based on this. Most of the early intensivists, like myself, came from the cardiac cath lab, where we basically were taught to understand access and waveforms and hemodynamics. And Peter Lang was my mentor, uh, followed by David Wessel, who was probably one of the first triple threats boarded in cardiology, critical care, and anesthesia. And this brought in both the anesthesia and cardiology component to the ICU. But none of that wouldn't have worked without Patty Hickey's leadership in cardiac nursing and her support from Aldo Castaneda as a critical part of the team to taking care of patients with critical heart disease. And my five minutes are up. Thank you very much. Thank you.